Welcome back to another Saturday live stream. We do this every single Saturday. We go through a full fantasy football draft. So if you're here prepping for your league, you got a draft in August. You got a draft in September. Come back every Saturday, hang out, learn a little bit, get maybe a little bit dumber. But I promise we'll go two steps forward, one step backward, and you will come out net positive at the end. Today, what we're doing is we will be doing a fantasy football draft, but I wanted to start off with a little something else first. I wanted to, this is one of the coolest parts, in my opinion, about underdog is that you do a ton of these drafts, right? And they're all paid at least $3. They can go anywhere up to like $1,000. But I, for the most part, do uh, a bunch of these $3 drafts just to, to stay on top of trends and to stay on top of ADP and just to see where players are getting drafted. So I know push come to shove when I'm doing drafts with my friends and stuff, which guys are dropping in value incredulously. I don't know if I use that correctly, but I love to throw the word incredulous out there every now and then just to keep people on their toes, just keep them traps flexed up, you know? So I wanted to go through my exposure. This is one of the coolest parts about this platform is they keep a running list of the percentage of times you have drafted a single player throughout all the drafts you've done. Now you can go and, and you know, filter it down to 10 person, three per whatever the fucking case may be. So I filtered it down to the three person because I think these are the drafts that I do the most of. And when you get into like the, the these $25, $7 uh, buy-ins are more like tournament style. So I don't think people are drafting necessarily based off regular fantasy football league type stature. You're shooting for a lot of upside because you're drafting against 85 million type beats of people, right? So the $3 drafts for me are when you're playing against 11 other people in a regular fantasy league, okay? And these are the ones I do most on underdog, so I just filtered it down to that. And I wanted to kind of just go over my exposure today. And the reason I love this tool, obviously it's like a really cool thing to just have at your disposal, but it keeps you honest. And what I what what, what I want you guys to take away first of all is that one, the percentages can be skewed based on where you're drafting in your league, right? Like I have a very high Stefan Diggs rate, as you can see, 32.1%. That could just mean that I draft at the 109 a lot, right? Like if I drafted at the 101 in 70% of my drafts, I'd probably have a, you know, 50% exposure to Justin Jefferson. So the early round guys, the guys that are really high up on the list, like the digs is or whatever, a lot of that has to do with how many times you've gotten the position at the 107, 108, 109 or whatever. The other thing to note too is like, these guys are not necessarily my favorite player, but what it does is it keeps you honest with what guys you like most at their value. Like, I don't fucking love Zay Jones. This does not mean that I'm drafting Zay Jones in every draft in the eighth round, in the ninth round. I just think his ADP right now is one of the most luscious in all of fantasy football. I would say, you know, in every one out of every three drafts, pretty much based on that percentage, I am grabbing Zay Jones. I do wish they had one thing that I wish that they included into this is the average ADP in which you drafted this player. That would be a cool addition. That just came off the top of my noggin. I'm going to talk to my reps about that. Rudman, I'll be in your fucking inbox in an hour, baby. Berm, don't think I'm letting you sleep on this either. We need an average ADP in which you drafted that player, all right? Because maybe it will be embarrassing. Maybe I am grabbing Zay Jones in like the eighth, ninth round. That becomes problematic, but it does let you know what players you like most at their current ADP. It's like every single time the 13th round rolls around, I'm hitting Jarek McKinnon. And that percentage will slowly decrease as more and more people are drafting them more highly. So it just lets you know, in your personal opinion, who you like the most, all right? And if you're not an underdog and you haven't started building up a portfolio yet, please go please go join. I promise it is the single best way for you to get better for your drafts. And I know I've made a few videos on like the best values and how I would approach draft strategy on underdog. Got a whole lot of comments that are like, oh, ESPN and Yahoo. And those guys are so fucking different that um, this is not, you know, realistic or not very helpful. And here's what I did. Monday's video coming up is my picks one through six. So if you have the 101 through the 106, in your fantasy draft, the number one strategy I would approach the draft with, right? Because I did 7 through 12 last week. Got really, really uh, good reviews, comments, whatever. You guys really liked it. So I'm going so to run it back with 1 through 6. And what I did is after drafting 3 or 4 drafts on underdog in order to get my strategy down packed and perfected, I went on to Yahoo and ESPN just to make sure that I can do the same strategy on there. Worked flawlessly. The only difference was that you actually got better players on those platforms. You were able to get dudes that I was like, all right, seventh, eighth round. You could wait on them till the ninth, tenth round, right? So there's not much of a difference, and I will include those drafts on the Monday video, right? So make sure you're subscribed if you want to watch that video. I will include the mock drafts I did on both Yahoo 
and ESPN to compare them to the strategy that I'm doing on underdog to show you that it ain't that different. It's just not that deep. OK, but what is deep is going to be your wallet on underdog, because if it is your first time depositing on the platform, if it's your first time on underdog downloading the app, one, use the link down below. It'll get you right onto the app, whether you're in the app store for iOS or Google or Android, whatever the fuck ever. It'll hit you with a 100 percent deposit match using our code. All right. If it's your first time on there and you're depositing 10 bucks but you throw BDGE into the little promo code spot, you're going to have $20 to play with on your account. If you throw $100 down there and you throw BDGE into your promo code slot, you will have $200 in your damn account, okay? So go download the app and come draft with us because all the drafts we do, for the most part, are with people within our Discord. Absolutely free to join, free to hang out, free to bullshit, Free to talk fantasy football. That's what's going on in the Discord right now. So that link is down below as well. Go join. I will drop links in there to draft with us on Underdog like I'm about to do right now. We need 11 for this draft that I have set up. And we are going to get into that tab after I, I shouldn't have done that because I wanted to talk about my most exposed players. I just did a full fucking intro without actually talking about any of them. Um, we will get back to them in between picks, I think. We'll see how quickly this bad boy fills up. Yep, we need four more people. That's going to fill up quickly. So quarterbacks, Matt Stafford, I think he's a fantastic value in the uh, 13. He's like the quarterback 19. He's a quarterback 20. They have the ADPs right there. Stafford, I feel like, is as long as he can stay healthy and his back doesn't break in half, he's going to throw up 4,200 yards. And you're getting him at QB 19 below dudes like, Who's the quarterback 18? I don't even know. Derek Carr is the quarterback 19. Matt Stafford is a quarterback 20. Like, I think that's great value. Josh Allen, uh, I've been nailing these, like, third-round quarterbacks, as you might have seen in my other video. So I like the elite quarterbacks. Justin Fields is a must-draft player for me this year. Anytime I, I miss out on the elite quarterbacks, I'm drafting Justin Fields in the third or fourth round. Sam Howell is one of my favorite late-round QBs. Just I like Geno Smith's value here, right? If you get him as your QB1 in the 11th, 12th round, I'm, I'm fine with it. He finishes the QB5 overall last year. We are almost... Uh, we got 30 seconds. Um, see how quick these things fucking fill up? Make sure you get into the Discord. Make sure you keep your fingers itchy. Otherwise, you will not be getting into these drafts. Uh, we'll jump back in here. I have the 103, so we'll jump back in there when my pick is up. But I want to talk a little bit more about... The, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I launched the draft. Like I had a whole strategy of how I was going to plan out this video. I had a whole strategy of like how I wanted to go through position by position and show you guys my favorite fucking players. And then I just started the draft like a moron. You see Tua right there. You got Desmond Ritter out of value. So those are my favorite quarterbacks right now are the guys that I have been drafting the most of. Unsurprisingly, I've been all over Jarek McKinnon. I think he's got like the clearest role in the single best offense in the NFL. We are up at pick three. I don't care if it's cup. I don't care if it's Tyree kill, but I'll grab that cup action. Fuck it. Let's solo cup it up right now. And we're not up for another, you know, 15, 18 picks. So now we can chill. I can breathe. I could take a sip of water and we could talk more about my favorite players. Now I know what you're thinking. Holy sheesh kebabs. We've got two new Orleans saints running backs within the top three most owned players. First of all, I'm grabbing Jarek McKinnon in 12th round every time clear pass catching back in a extremely pass heavy offense that throws the ball a ton and scores a ton. He had 21 third down targets last year. Pacheco had zero. He had 11 targets inside the 10 yard line. Pacheco had zero. He is, he is that dude. All right. And honestly, I don't even really hate Isaiah Pacheco, which you could actually see down here. I have 10% drafted. Also, I, I've done a lot of these drafts. Uh, these are 28 drafts altogether this percentage but if you honestly expand it to all of my drafts i think it's up to like around 50 some of them i started like a couple months ago so there will be opinions that kind of change on certain guys that i like more or less now than i did beforehand and uh that will kind of skew my percentages a little bit but alvin kamara is a dude that i have been drafting pretty much uh every single time in the ninth round when he falls there i get it he's probably facing a suspension but i also think that we we look back at his prime days were with Drew Brees, who is a phenomenal dump off QB. And then you have Jameis Winston. Then you have the skeleton of Andy Dalton. Those guys were never going to be good for his pass catching upside. We're still chilling. 
We'll get back to the draft in a minute. I promise. Uh, those guys were never going to be good for his pass catching upside. And now that he's got Derek, Derek Carr back, who just had Josh Jacobs hit career highs and targets and receptions and all that kind of sheesh. I am. I love Alvin Kamara in the ninth round. Like if he gets up to like fifth, sixth round, I'll probably be off of him, but I'll be on Kendra Miller, who I also have. I loved Kendra Miller coming out of TCU. He was my RB3 in this class behind Bijan and Jameer Gibbs. I think he's ultra talented. I'm a little bit worried because he's missed a lot of time during summer, and I heard a report that he came into camp out of shape, which is never what you want to hear for someone who is, you know, relatively lean and kind of explosive. So that has kind of made me push off of him a little bit. Um, either way, I love both Saints running backs. I think they're both super talented. I think one of them will hit anyways. Um, so I don't mind doubling down and actually grabbing both guys on a single team because when Kamara misses, Kendra will fill in and be uh, really, really, really good. You guys know I love Ramondre Stevenson. I am really hedging Travis Etienne with Tank Bigsby. I think he's going to have a, a role immediately in that Jacksonville backfield. They're going to be a little thunder and lightning action. Uh, still got about seven picks, so we can run through the rest of the running backs. Jeff Wilson, I just think he's going to be the goal line back in Miami, and I'm very high on Miami's offense. So I think he'll have a ton of scoring opportunities. Will he rush for more than like 600 yards in the season? Unlikely, but I don't think you're giving 185-pound Devon A. Chain or 190-pound Raheem Mostert uh, any goal line looks in an offense, again, that I expect to score 25, 26 points per game. So I think Wilson's one of the best values in fantasy drafts right now. Y'all know I love David Montgomery, and y'all know I love J.K. Dobbins, so they are up on that list. Now, most of the wide receivers I think I end up hammering again. I think the the highest percentage usually comes from just late-round guys that I really like. Zay Jones, I think, is super underrated as a, a mid-double-digit round pick because – He's attached to Trevor Lawrence, who's going to go bazookas this year, and he was really good last year, so there's no reason that he won't be a heavy part of that offense. They also have Marvin Jones out of there, which is like 80 targets or so. Obviously, Calvin Ridley comes in there and fucks his whole day up, but we're not looking for Zay Jones to be you know, uh, a wide receiver too. He's getting drafted as the wide receiver 57 right now, and he put up 823 yards last year and 82 catches. Like He was legitimately really good for this team, and we are legitimately – on the clock, we can go with the Lave here. We can go with the running back here, which I would prefer. I've been taking so much from Andre Stevenson, and you could see it in my ownership percentage. I really like the um, I really like the strategy of going elite wide receiver, and then someone who I think is going to be an elite fantasy running back in the second round, and that is Ramondre Stevenson. And we'll be back up in about five more picks. It's actually, let's just look at the board here. I don't think I've taken one breath this entire video. Shout out to fucking me, honestly. Uh, we got Tyree Kill, Austin Eckler, C-Max. We had two running backs going in the top six. Kelsey all the way at nine. Interesting. Mahomes went at 16. Whoosh. Sure. All right. Pretty standard board, I feel like, for, for underdog drafts. We've got two guys who went to wide receivers, so there will be a running back drafted there. And here, here's the thing. Like, this is where I take my elite QB. This is where I will be taking an elite quarterback. Super similar to the 7 through 12 draft spot strategy, I will do this every single time. Elite running back, elite wide receiver, elite quarterback, and now you have a really, really um, – now you have a really, really well-rounded team, and you're not forced to draft any specific positions. And that's kind of how I like to put myself – in a position for success when it comes to fantasy football. Let's get back to the wide receivers. Uh, Diggs, I honestly feel like a lot of this probably has to do with the fact that when I did the one through six strategy video last week or earlier this week, um, it underdog gave me like five drafts in a row where I was picking from the eight spot and I just kept taking Diggs. So Diggs is there. Obviously, I've got no problem with him. I am not fading him by any means. He is still the alpha in an offense led by Josh Allen. That should be pretty damn good. I'm not going to lie, Tyquan Thornton sitting here at three is a little bit sus. He's not a guy that I've drafted recently uh, because they re-signed Devontae Parker to an extension. And this was uh, this was definitely like an early offseason draft spot for me where I was hitting him pretty hard and heavy. Really liked him as a, as a rookie. I think he got kind of an unfair crack because he came into the year super injured. But he's really explosive and he brings something to the offense that they do not have. But the camp reports haven't been like overly great for him. Um, and I think Devontae Parker is still very much going to be involved in that offense. Juju obviously was paid. So he 
I don't know if he, I mean, maybe he gets onto the field in two wide receiver sets. Maybe they have Juju sit uh, when they go two wide receiver sets, but they're also probably going to be a run heavy team. So I'm not like overly, I can't, it's hard to get optimistic about a ton of people in this passing offense. Uh, if they didn't resign or extend Devontae Parker, I'd probably feel a little bit better, but, but they did. And I hit Terry McLaurin at the end of the fourth round, pretty much every single time. Love him. Sky Moore is a dude that I want in the KC offense, based on the fact that you can draft him like five rounds after Kadarius Tony. And I still think he's a really good route runner. I still think this is a, um, I still think this is an offense that has just complete opportunity up for grabs with Juju gone and Miko Hardman gone and no one really cemented behind Travis Kelsey. So I like Sky Moore a lot. I like Hodgins to kind of emerge as the one there in New York. I am not afraid of Chris Godwin or Mike Evans, to be completely honest with you. Um, even with Baker Mayfield there, y'all know I love Waddle. Hard not to love Cooper Cup, but yeah, that's kind of my highest on guys. And then, of course, getting to the thumbnail, I have been drafting George Kittle as much as humanly possible. He is my favorite tight end this year. He is my favorite tight end value in fantasy drafts. I just think we're overthinking this, right? Like George Kittle a couple of years ago sets the all time record for most receiving yards in a season. Obviously, Kelsey basically, uh, put him right into a box immediately and, and became that record holder. But that that's like, that's the takeaway here. He got his record broken by Travis Kelsey. That is the type of company that he's in. You know, he is with Travis Kelsey. He is Travis Kelsey. He is that tier. Yes. He struggled a little bit here and there to stay healthy. That's part of the game of football. And I've dropped this stat many times since 1980, George Kittle has three of the highest receiving yardage total games at the tight end position of any nine that didn't come out correctly. He has three of the top nine highest receiving yards total games since 1980 for any tight end. Three of the top nine, 210, 182, and I think 181 yards in single games. Like we're never getting consistency out of, out of tight ends. Just give this man the ball and he will put you up 30 point games every now and then. And those are the guys I want on my fantasy team. Also, as it relates to George Kittle, with Brock Purdy as the starting quarterback, who I am very, very confident in is going to be the starting quarterback for San Francisco come week one, George Kittle scored seven touchdowns in the seven games that they played together. I get we can look at the target share and it's a little bit dipped off. And yes, it's going to be hard to, to maintain a 25% target share with Debo and Ayuk and Christian McCaffrey in a single offense. But Kittle seems to be the red zone guy there. Kittle seems to be the constant piece of Brock Purdy's eyeball, okay? So I love George Kittle. I'm going to try to get him in this fucking draft that we're in right now. We're almost up now. Oh, they took Terry. They took Ayuk. We won't grab Kittle yet. Hopefully he falls back to us a little bit later. So we've got a, a, a nice, solid selection of running backs that are there. And to be honest with you, I get that you start three wide receivers, but I like Aaron Jones and I like J, uh, J.K. Dobbins more than I like any of the hopeful Jerry Judy or Mike Williams competing with Quentin Johnston. So yes, I get you got to start three wide receivers, but I'm only playing against these three, uh, these 11 people. Where the fuck did I get three from? Uh, I'm only playing against these 11 people. So I don't, this is not a tournament play where you need to go nine wide receivers. So I'll grab uh, Aaron Jones there and then kind of have my pick of the litter of these middle tier uh, wide receivers. Let's see. Let's see. I don't have a lot of Jerry Judy. I don't love Jerry Judy. I know he finished strongly, but he also has a huge sample size of just like not being great. Am I back in on Russ? No, not really. Um, he's not a guy that I draft heavily in these types of drafts. I just like, I don't know how you could watch last year and, and think that things are going to be okay in Denver. Like, yeah, sure. Sean Payton is there, but like, do I want a wide receiver or would I rather just take Kittle? Even, and this is best ball, right? This is best ball where, like, the biggest games are the ones that really make a difference. And that makes me feel like the the move here is probably going with George Kittle. The only reason I don't want to do that is because we end up in kind of a gross area of, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. How am I going to put him in the thumbnail and then just spew for eight minutes about George Kittle and then not take him? 2023 summer. We not lying no more. We not lying no more. All right. Um, so back to the list real quick. We got George Kittle, Hayden Hurst. I think at tight end 25 is just a great value in best ball. Because, again, if you're new here and you've never played on underdog, first, of course, download the app. Use promo code BDGE. I don't think I can give it a more resounding review and uh, positive critique. 
single best platform to get ready for your actual fantasy football drafts. Using our code will get you a 100% deposit match when you throw it down. Hayden Hurst at tight end 25, perfect for best ball. He's going to be an 80% snap guy, right? Is he ever going to put up fucking eight for 150 and two? No, but he will be your starting tight end. And I bet like 25 to 30% of weeks on underdog if you don't get an elite tight end, okay? Because Hayden Hurst is going to be running 80% of the routes. We also have no idea who Bryce Young's favorite targets are going to be. Right. Like, sure, they have Adam Thielen, but they have DJ Chark and they have Jonathan Mingo and they have Terrace Marshall and they have all these dudes that are one unproven for the most part. Adam Thielen's obviously a vet, but he's old as fuck. But no one that we know has chemistry with Adam Thielen. So why can't Aiden Hurst be the second most targeted guy in this offense? Y'all know I love Jawan Johnstein. Y'all know I love Isaiah Likely, TJ Hawk, Gerald Everett. These are all guys that I've kind of gone in on and told you that I love a little bit. So those are my favorite guys. You know, that's it. Let's get back to the draft. Whew. All right, let's check some comments. What's going on there? I bet you guys are all telling me that my mic's been fucking off. That's not what I want to do. Insanity. Alave is the best value there. Oh, sorry if I missed Super Chats. I've just been in my fucking bag, as you could tell. Let me throw you uh, bottom left corner. Rick Darula, love the name, first of all. Uh, 14 man standard keeper league, keep one. Stevenson in the fifth, Alave in the eighth, or T Law in the twelfth. All right, so, well, standard. Okay, here, here's one like piece of advice that I want to give to people in keeper leagues do not take value over the best player. Do not take because this, like, I'm taking Stevenson over Alave, me personally, nine times out of 10, especially in like a normal league, not a best ball, not start three wide receiver type league. It's Stevenson over Lave for me nine out of 10 times. I don't care that there's a three round gap in it, right? I don't care that there's a little bit more value there. Cause here's the thing with keeper leagues, a fifth round pick. Realistically, the fact that it's a fifth round pick and every single person in your league is probably keeping one, if not two players, that fifth round pick is realistically the players that are going to be available are going to be sixth to seventh round players, right? So it's not really that big of a difference between the sixth, seventh round player and an eighth, ninth round player. That's the way I would think about keeper leagues. Always take the best player on keeper. Do not let like a little bit of round value convince you to take someone who's actually worse at fantasy football. And the fact that this is a standard league lets me uh, easily take Stevenson because I think he's got really high touchdown upside. I'd be surprised if Stevenson does not finish the year with at least double-digit touchdowns, with at least 10 touchdowns. You have Damian Harris out there. Stevenson's going to be the complete goal line back there in an offense that I think will be a little bit more improved. So uh, I would take Stevenson there in the fifth, Rick. Ricky, baby. Ricky, baby. Oh, man, I'm so far behind in the comments. I'm sorry if I skipped anybody. Super chat. I'm sorry if I skipped fucking every single comment ever, but you had you just had to let me eat there. I was on I was on a fucking Trey Sermon. I was in my I was cooking. I was cooking. Nick, your thoughts on this Lance to Atlanta nonsense. Is that is that like a thing that resurfaced? Is that something that happened like recently? Was there more rumors about it? I, honestly, I wouldn't hate it. It really would depend on what the package we gave up for. If we give up anything more than like a third or fourth round pick, I will be extremely upset about it. I don't care that he was a first round pick. Uh, I, I am not high on Lance right now, but we also don't have anything concrete at uh, QB. So I would be more than happy to grab um, someone like him and let him compete, right? Like Trey Lance, Desmond Ritter, shar uh, swords sharpen swords, right? Let the best man win. Oh, I like this spot a lot right now. We got a couple of receivers that I really like that are left. Tyler Lockett, nice. I haven't got a lot of Michael Pittman. I have not got a lot of Michael Pittman this year, and I'm kind of happy to get him here um, at the 6'10". And I think a lot of it comes back to the fact that Matt Ryan was so bad last year. Pittman really did not have a chance to succeed, and I still think he's a good route runner. I don't know if any of you guys subscribe to Reception Perception by Matt Harmon, but it is a phenomenal paid subscription where this guy where Matt charts every receiver's like routes he does like a four or five game sample and then does their success rate against man zone and press coverage and Michael Pittman last year ranked really highly going into it like 90th percentile <coughs> did the same again this year so like I, I think it's more situational than it is Michael Pittman as a player All right, I'm feeling good still. I'm feeling pretty good uh, because we can grab Jordan Addison. We can grab Jahan Dotson. I personally like Jahan Dotson the most here. 
I like him over Jordan Addison. Although I do like Kirk a lot. I think they're going to throw the ball a ton. Uh, I just talked about him in my bus proof players video. I'm going to take Jahan. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really high on Jahan Dotson. I, I don't know if he's got necessarily a ceiling, but I feel good about him as my wide receiver three. So the team I feel like is looking good. It's, it's looking well-rounded. Like we have, we have fucking bangers at every position. This, I, I like going more well-rounded in these underdog drafts while everyone goes so wide receiver heavy. So this is the squad so far. Actually, we'll just pull up the big board. I'm too big. I got to shut my mouth and put myself in the counter. Uh, we're picking from the three. We have Cup. We have Ramondre. We have Jalen Hurts. We have Aaron Jones. We have George Kittle, Michael Pittman, and Jahan Dotson. So I'm like a little bit weak at wide receiver, but I think that's uh, at wide receiver three, but that's my only hole. Like I have a high-end wide receiver one, in my opinion, a high-end running back one, a high-end quarterback one, a really high-end running back two, a high-end tight end two, a solid wide receiver two, and then you know, wide receiver three is a little problematic, but overall, man, I, I think like going with a more diversified variable type team, I like how my team ends up a little bit more that way. And because you draft such a large team on underdog, um, again, if you guys are new to best ball, they automatically start, you're drafting 18 rounds and they automatically start the best players at every single position for you each week based on a one QB two running back, three wide receiver, one tight end lineup. So if our wide receiver groups a little bit less uh attractive than the rest of the positions we could just over index on volume there we could draft eight wide receivers right because we feel good about the other positions that's where i'm sitting at right now let's head back to the chat for a little bit cheeseburger or burger with cheese uh definitely a cheeseburger I feel like the only time ever someone says a burger with cheese is at a barbecue when like whoever's on the fucking grill comes around. It's like burger, burger with cheese, with cheese. Otherwise, you're fucking weirdo. If you're if, if like you use that in your everyday life, in my humble opinion. Schnog sharpen schnogs for real, for real. Do we like Tony? Uh, I do. I don't like where he goes, though. Uh, he's dropping a little bit. If I, I mean, listen, if he drops me in the eighth round, I'm cool with it. I just have a really hard time believing that uh, Tony ever has, like, the upside of being an actual alpha. Like, I, they're never really going to ask him to run routes on the outside. Like, he'll always be kind of a gadget player. And I think that could work. Like, I, I do think that could work in uh, Andy Reid's offense because he's so fucking smart and talented with the way he uses his players. But... I feel like everything really has to break so right for Tony. And basically up to this point in his career, everything is broken in half. So again, I, I like Sky more, I think, a little bit more than I like Tony based on where they're both getting value. You think the odds of Saquon and Jacob sitting are gone with Mixon's new contract? Uh, I don't think the two are related. Mixon's contract is like a restructure. It's not a, It's not really like a new contract. So I don't I, I don't think they're related. Saquon and Jacobs are looking for long term deals. Thoughts on Pollard's value in Dynasty? Trying to sell him at the moment, but I don't know what I could what value I could get. Would you like a yeah? So so Pollard's a dude that I'm not like in love with for Dynasty. I do think it's kind of like a perfect storm where he can go crazy this year, maybe into next year. But the problem with like running backs is one Dallas just learned their fucking lesson with. Uh, with Zeke, right? Do you think a guy like Pollard's about to get a four for 60 type deal? Not a chance. The other the other problem with Pollard is he's been on Dallas for his entire rookie contract now, right? Like he's not young. He's not 22 years old anymore where if he gets another two-year deal, like, okay, he's still 23, 24, 25. Problem is if for whatever reason, if he has a great year, maybe he gets a contract somewhere like three for 30, right? If he has a mediocre year, he's not getting a fat contract anywhere. You know what I mean? Like, and he's going to be, I want to say, I'm, I forget how old he is right now. Let me look it up real quick. I, I think he's 26 right now. Tony P, baby. What are you doing? What are you doing? He's 26 right now. So he'll be 27 going into next year as a guy who needs to sign his second contract kind of like yeah, it, it, that's a situation I kind of want to get out of, especially with his hype being at, like, an all-time high right now. Uh, I would try to sell him for a younger... Uh, see if you could fucking swap him for, like, Javante in picks or something like that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
for the birthday wishes. Not my birthday, but I'll take it. All right, we're almost bike up on the clock here. <clears throat> Probably need to keep hammering away at wide receivers because there aren't many running backs that I absolutely love right now. Uh, and again, we're not forced to take any specific position because we've already loaded up on quarterback and tight end and we don't need to reach on any of them. So I, listen, I'll take Zay Flowers here. He's not a dude that I love. Uh, I, I'm having a hard time really deciphering that passing offense, and I think I like Rashad Bateman the most. But if Zay Flowers drops to me here, I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm excited about the offense. They'll be more pass heavy. Tom Munkin's a goat. Um, so this will probably not work well at all, but whatever. Fourth wide receiver. I'm cool with it. We chilling. In your opinion, which Cardinals player has the best upside? Because I'm thinking that I should avoid Card. Yeah, I'm like pretty off on basically every Cardinals player except for two of them. I love. Where are you? Michael Wilson has been pretty much my 18th round pick in like most of my best ball drafts. His the percentage of ownership for him on that page that I was showing you guys before will be really high by the end of the summer. I'm surprised he's not fucking up here already. There he is. Okay. 14.3%. So it's a pretty high rate. Um, I love Michael Wilson and I will be taking some shots on Trey McBride because he's all the way down here at uh, tight end 26 and you basically get him for free. So those are my two favorite Cardinals players. I'm not looking to invest luxury picks into that offense, which is going to be an absolute shit show. Damn. I was really hoping Sky Moore fell back to me at wide receiver five. Well, <clears throat> what do we want to do here? What do you guys think is my? Uh, what do you guys think about Michael Thomas as wide receiver five? I'm getting him about five spots past ADP. I have very little exposure to him, but I feel like I could, I could, I could do worse based on the fact that like I need a little bit of wide receiver upside and depth and all that bullshit. I'll take him here in the ninth round. Anything earlier than the ninth round, I'm pretty much out on MT for. But I'll I'll take him down here. See, this is what I'm saying. Like, we have a ton of really, really good players at these other positions. And the fact that we got Cup, it's almost like hero wide receiver, right? Like, we took our one guy. Cup will be a starter every single week for me. I think he scored 15 PPR points in, like, 95% of his games over the last two, three years. Um, so he'll be a starter every single week. And I really just have to piece together two other ones. And, like, between Pittman, Dots, and Flowers, we'll get a few more. We'll be looking real good with this team, I think. Should I keep Burrow in the seventh or CD in the third? Uh, see, this is another one where like I'm not really too concerned about value. I would I would much rather take uh, CD. I would take CD in the third because you'll still be able to get a QB in the fifth, sixth round that you feel really comfortable with. You'll be able to get um, you know Herbert T Law, depending on where Fields falls, you'll be able to get him. So I I, I personally would take CD. I just want the better fantasy player. Thoughts on Elliot and Hunt, their current ADPs. Yeah, so I'm I'm 100 in on Zeke where he's going. I haven't drafted any Hunt. Uh, Zeke has been like a fifteenth round pick for me in a lot of my underdog drafts. I think Zeke signs with a contender. I think he becomes <laughs> at least at worst a committee at, at the goal line in a good offense. Really like Zeke. Never commented before. I think this is year four listening to you. Keep up the great videos. I tell people all the time to listen to you. Right, thank you, Bruce. Cheers to you, buddy. I feel like having Stevenson and Pollard automatically makes me a win now. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, I think that's a really fucking dangerous combo of running backs to have. Um, I'm so okay with not trading players. Like, even if Pollard is a guy that I want to trade away right now, if I'm going for the fucking hardware, send it. Send that motherfucker. Nick, say water. 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 I have water in here. Despite this being a triple stack solo cup, this is water. Motherfucker. Michael Wilson was my rookie third round pick. Hell yeah. End of third dub. I got a lot of Michael Wilson in Dynasty, too. Do we like Elijah Moore? Ah, I, I kind of go back and forth. I don't have a ton of exposure to him just because I feel like when I'm on the clock, I like guys that are going 
around him a little bit better. Uh, like, he went at the 7-7 here. So, like, if Jahan Dotson, who went a couple picks earlier, I would probably take Dotson over more. If I fade QBs, I'd rather take, like, a Deshaun Watson over more. Ah. I, I kind of like the area he goes in, though. I might, I might think about taking – like, I, I think I would take Addison over more possibly, but I should probably get a few a, a few more shares of him. I think I like him more, more than Quentin Johnson. I like him more than Pickens. I probably like him more than Brandon Cooks, even though I think I've been taking more Brandon Cooks over more. I think Elijah Moore is a good player. I, 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 I just think that situation needs to be uh, dealt with a little bit, you know? All right, we're almost back on the clock at the 10-11. Do we grab a QB2 here? No, nah, we don't even have to. We don't even have to. That's the only downside of grabbing like an elite QB early is like you could really wait forever, forever and grab Jared Goff and Matt Stafford or Rodgers and Derek Carr and probably be okay. I am really happy that you passed on Brian Robinson there because B-Rob going all the way at the end of the 10th, he was a dude who had like six games of 20 plus carries last year. You know Riverboat Ron wants to fucking get every single one of his players CTE by the end of the year. The other thing to consider, too, that I feel like we're really not talking about enough is the fact that, like, B-Rob straight up won the starting job from Antonio Gibson in the preseason last year. Just, like, took it right away from him. And then he got shot and came back. So, like, we got to factor in the fact that he was probably less than 100% for a lot of the season. And... For running backs, like momentum is a big thing for grabbing a starting role, but overall, just for like your career too. B Rob had a lot of momentum last summer that kind of just like flew off the rails, obviously, as he got gunned down. Um, so B Rob all the way down here, I feel like is great, kind of like floor upside combo. Thomas equals dust, yeah, for sure, dude. Like, I, I'm not, I'm not really expecting much from Michael Thomas. The thing is, though, like, where let's see where I got him. So I got Michael Thomas here. The other wide receivers, like the next wide receiver is Tyler Boyd. Like he's dusty. Lazard is dusty. James Williams out six games. Nico Collins might not even be like a top three wide receiver in his offense. Everyone, every other receiver left here, like Odell, Juju, they're all fucking dusty too. Like we're just living in a house that hasn't been cleaned in years. They're all dust. Everybody's dust. Dust gods. Almost bad. Ah, you took Jarek McKinnon, you son of a bitch. So this is the this is the thing, right? Like, I have so much Eric McKinnon because I was able to get him in the 12th or 13th round. People are going to start, you know, eventually agreeing with me, seeing that value, and he'll no longer be that uh, that type of value. But I also – I think there are a lot of really good running backs here available. Elijah Mitchell, I think, is a great late-round running back who will get a ton of run in San Francisco's offense despite C-Mac being there. He was like a double-digit carry guy even when C-Mac came, came last year. Uh, Jamal Williams is like a fine pick. Any of the New Orleans running backs I like. We'll go Mitchell here. As the RB4. Actually, I want to see where Kamara went off the board. 8-6. All right, so he's, he's slowly starting to move up. Kamara was like a 10th rounder a few weeks ago. I started grabbing him in the ninth round. Now you're seeing him go in the middle of the 8th round. I would say 8th round I'm still okay with. I think anything earlier than that I'm probably passing because you have like DeMont was a 7th round running back. And then the wide receivers I'd probably – take over him there so I think I mean every round that he moves up earlier is like uh, more risk that you take on of course hell yeah I got over 50% Michael Wilson 100 drafts you'd love to see it Thomas could be the wide receiver one nah listen he's just uh, Olave's Olave's the real deal Thomas don't have it anymore CD or Diggs, uh, I will take Diggs there. Unless I am positioned to snag Bijan, I'm thinking of going zero running back with Hertz as my one keep. Yeah, I think there are going to be a lot of um, a lot of teams that I build out that are like zero running back, one running back. I'm actually in the middle of the Scott Fishbowl. I could actually throw that board up on here for you guys if you want to see what I'm cooking with right now. I'm actually probably – oh, oh, shit, I got two hours left. I've been on the clock. I got to make a pick. Ooh, should I take Jarek McKinnon in the 13th? Damn. 
Okay, okay, okay. Let me make this pick, and then I'll explain. The, the settings in this league are fucking nuts. I'm going to take Jarek here. Fuck it. You see how I have an eight-hour clock, and I just come in there and make a pick in five seconds? That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. All right, so if you guys are unfamiliar with the Scott Fish Bowl, guy Scott Fish, really big name in the fantasy industry, puts together this tournament every year that's like fucking 2,000 people in it, and every like fantasy analyst plays in it pretty much with a bunch of fans as well, and it's just a really cool thing he puts together for charity. And uh, the league settings are always crazy. Like, before you judge my team, which I actually really like, I'm right here at the 109. Here are the, uh, here are the settings, all right? So I believe it's um, 0.25 for each pass completion and maybe 0.1 for each pass attempt. Actually, I'll just fucking bring it up. The settings are nuts. The settings are fucking wonky. All right, so passing touchdowns are six points. Passing first downs are 0.1. Pass completed is 0.1. So it's like super quarterback premium. Rushing first downs get a point. Rush attempts get 0.25. Receiving first downs are a point. This is full PPR. And hear this shit. <clears throat> tight ends. Tight ends not only... Tight ends not only... Uh, gets... Sorry, I'm reading the group chat. I thought the guy was yelling at me. I'm like, bitch, I take my fucking... I, I take two seconds every time I'm on the clock. Um, tight ends get two point per PPR and and two point for first down. So every time they catch a first down, they're getting four points on that catch. All right? So what I did was somehow got George Kittle all the way down here at 4-9. So I went Trevor Lawrence because he's going to throw a lot and he's going to complete a lot of passes. So with those bonuses, love that. Grab Cooper Cup. This is full PPR, plus point per first down. A.J. Brown. I didn't love, like, if Jonathan Taylor fell to me there, I definitely would have taken him at three instead. And I kind of regret not taking Ramondre, to be honest with you, here at 3-4, because I think he's going to be both a PPR monster and probably get a fuckload of first downs. I took Kittle, because, again, tight end premium. Rodgers, uh, as, as much as I'm not really on Rodgers, like, I don't think there'll be a ton of volume. He's also an efficient quarterback. So the first downs and the pass completions will probably go a long way with Rodgers. So I felt good about him as my QB2. Ridley, I got at the end of the sixth, which I love because I have Trevor Lawrence. So I got a little stack there. DeMont was my first running back. But again, it is 0.25 uh, for each carry and point per first down, which is basically his exact role in that Detroit offense. Grabbed another tight end who I'm really high on for uh, my tight end too. But you're also starting three wide receivers. You're starting two flexes, two running backs, and a tight end. So I could put Njoku in as a flex spot, and he'll probably put up like 12 points a game at minimum. Got Burks at nine, Desmond Ritter, Charbonnet, Bateman, and Jarek McKinnon. So I feel, obviously, my running back group is is a little bit light, but I'm not like too, too, too worried about it. I feel really good about my team and like the well-roundedness of it and the flexibility I'm going to have with five good wide receivers, two good tight ends, uh, three quarterbacks. Let me know how you guys feel about this Scott Fish team. And we're bike. So we are almost into our 12th round pick. And maybe we start to look at other positions now. Here's the, the other problem is I'm not actually sure what like best practice is here. Like if I grab a Jalen Hurts, the problem, the problem with me when I grab a Jalen Hurts or a George Kittle is like that position goes out of my brain for the next like hour, right? And maybe it's worth grabbing a Jalen Hurts and a uh, like and a Kirk Cousins, right? Because you want the best, the most points at the best position or the most. Uh, how about a Derek Carr, Michael Thomas stack? That's what I'm talking about right there. You know, once I get one elite guy at a position that starts one guy, I kind of like throw it out the window, and I feel like maybe that's not a great strategy. But I'll take Derek Carr; he'll be fine. Are there any season-long unders you like on underdog? Um, I haven't made a video on it yet, but I probably will, I think. Let's go. We'll go check it out. Oh, oh, that's right. I forgot to fucking advertise this. What a moron I am. So, Patrick Mahomes, they have a free fucking line right now on underdog. 0.5 passing yards in week one. They just want to get you guys on the platform. They literally want to give money away to you guys. This is only up for one week. This Patrick Mahomes line is only up for one single week, all right? So if you don't get a line, you're literally giving away fucking free money right now. If you don't get a line in with Patrick Mahomes by the end of the week, you're an idiot, and I hate you, your guts. 
All right, we're almost back on the clock. Let me make a pick, and then we can start yelling again. Sure. Let's see. Hmm. So we got two QBs. We got four running backs. We got five wide receivers. I think I want to pad my receiver group a little bit more here. I'm going to I'm gonna take, ah, man, do I want to take Rondell Moore? Rondell Moore, 17 spots passes ADP. I do think with, like, a new coaching system, because Cliff Kingsbury just didn't know how to fucking use anybody, Rondell Moore could be kind of a cool player. I could see him catching, like, 60, 70 passes, although Greg Dortch was so much better than him last year. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. We go double stack on New Orleans. Let's go Derek Carr. Let's go Michael Thomas and Rashid Shahid. While everybody zigs, while everybody lobs, laves, we we don't throw lobs up. We don't throw laves up. We dunk that shit down. Understood? Cool. Um, Yes. So Underdog has a free square up there for you right now with Mahomes at .5 passing yards. And again, listen. Some of you guys do best ball. Some of you guys like to gamble a little bit. They have pick'ems for NFL season-long props. And you could pair the Mahomes with a season-long pick'em, but you obviously have to wait until the end of the season to cash that out. But again, the double deposit match, right, the 100% deposit match on Underdog with our code works for anything. Like the money you have on this account, which I have a, a cool 55 bucks up there, you could use for best ball. You could use for pick'ems. It doesn't matter. It's inter interchangeable. If you win a pick em, like you play basketball or baseball, whatever sports are fucking going on right now, you win a pick em, you could invest that into best ball drafts. Um, let's see what we got here. Pick -ems. I actually, believe it or not, I like the lower on Jared Goff's passing touchdowns because I think their defense was so bad last year that it forced them to put up 35 points a game. And I think they want to be a run first offense. Um, and I think their defense is going to be a lot more improved this year. So I like the under on Jared Goff's passing touchdowns. <clears throat> There's part of me that wants to take this Mac Jones uh, over 0.5 rushing touchdowns just because it's like Bill Belichick's offense. And he had to have like learned kind of how to do a one yard sneak from Brady at some point. And they have to run that on the one yard line, right? Like, you know, if you if you want to have a little fun, if you want to have a little fun in this economy, I kind of like the over on 0.5 rushing touchdowns there. CJ Stroud, this number feels like way too fucking high. I would probably take the lower on both of these 20 and 30, 3,400 fields. Don't love anything there. The way I look at season long lines is pretty much like if my eyes get big and I like the over, I just move past it. I only bet unders and I bet the ones I feel really good about. I, I don't almost ever bet unders or uh, overs. I really want them to release their uh, receiving line, receptions lines, sorry. Damn, they got Deshaun all – see, this the, – how are they going to have him at 26.5 passing touchdowns but only 3,600 passing yards? Something doesn't add up there. Like, do you expect them to have a good season or a bad season, right? You can't have both. Like, they got Dak pressed for the same amount of pass, passing touchdowns, but 400 more passing yards. <clears throat> so if anyone can figure out and break that math equation there, it's probably free money, one of these lines. Russ, 24.5 passing touchdowns feels wildly high. I'd, I'd bet the under on that. You also got to consider, like, li listen, if any of these guys misses, like, two games, you're pretty much guaranteed to hit the under on most of their lines. A rich passing touchdowns, I'd easily fucking hammer the under on 16. I'd hammer the other on, on yards, too. Like, I think there's a chance Minshew starts a month of the season. <coughs> hmm. Bryce, that feels a little bit high for Bryce, to be honest with you. 22 and a half passing touchdowns. Like, I actually really like Bryce, and I think he's going to be a great player, but I don't know. <coughs> I feel like unless you're like a prolific rookie, you're you're really not throwing these numbers up too easily. James Connor, I'd probably take the lower on his rushing touchdowns. Probably take the lower on Tony Pollard's rushing touchdowns. I think I'd probably take the higher on Sanders' point five. I'd probably take the higher on Kenneth Walker's point five receiving. <coughs> I, 
I I think I would probably take the lower on almost like every fucking rushing touchdown prop that's this high. Jacobs, I would take the lower on nine. Except for Derrick Henry. I've learned my lesson there. I think Chubb over .5 receiving touchdowns makes a little bit of sense with Kareem Hunt not in town anymore. Almost in the 14th round. Let's see what we got. I think now might be the time to grab uh, our second tight end. Really, I don't know if I'm a sucker for going in on Juwan Johnson. It's hard for me to tell. I really fucking like him as a player. He's so athletic, and he just kind of like broke out. <laughs> but they did bring over Foster Moreau, who I think is kind of overrated. Fuck it. Juwan Johnson to the, to the moon. Let's see. Ramondre, six rushing touchdowns. I want to say I put slips in like, let me see. What, what, I think I put basically one slip in so far, or maybe I did more. Uh, this is the first slip I took. So lower 750 for Waller. You see all the lower. Now they're, they've moved a lot, right? So like the earlier you get on in on these, the better. I had Rashad White at 800.5 rushing yards. And what was he down to now? Okay, it's actually only 20 yards, but still, it's, it's it's on its way down, and you want to get them at their highest point if you're taking the under, obviously. Do we just double down on uh, New Orleans tight ends, or will that fuck me because Foster Moreau breaks out? But what if we go Juwan Johnson and Taysom Hill? Nope. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. Uh, I really like Tim Patrick. That's all I got to say about that. What else we got here? Yeah, I'd still probably take the under armor shot white rushing yards. <clears throat> I would take the under armor shot penny rushing yards, almost 700. Fuck up out of here with that. Damian Harris, I would definitely take the under on even on 550. He's going to be at, if he beats Latavius Murray out for the starting job, he's probably going to post like fucking 38 rushing yards a game. And if he gets hurt, he's absolutely shot. See, I scroll past all these because I like the overs on all of them. So I don't even, I don't even tempt myself with it. You know, it's like, if you got a food addiction, like don't even, don't even be storing cookies in the house. Don't even be walking into a fast food joint. Cause you know what the, you know, what's going to happen. You know what the end result is. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'd be doing with things that I like. If they're overs, I'm like, just move. Just move on past it, Nikki baby. Also, if you've been hanging out in the stream, can we throw some uh, some thumbs up in here? I feel like this has been not, not the worst stream I've ever done. I would love that. Yeah. All right. Whatever. You guys can figure it out. Well, if you uh, if you want to go hit those lines, like I said, we will double your deposit for you if you use our code BDG. If it's your first time depositing on Underdog, all right, all right, then. All right. We took TP. Probably need to grab one more running back to give us a fifth back and maybe a third tight end. Maybe a third tight end. Probably hammer wide receivers for the rest of the positions. Let's check the cat. The uh, the chat at. Nick, help me out. Judy in the sixth, McLaurin in the seventh, or Ridley in the eighth, pick two. Uh, for me personally, for sure, <coughs> McLaurin and Ridley. I like both of them over Judy just straight up. And the fact that you're getting them around later, I'm all in on that. Who will have a better career after getting shot, b Raw. I mean, 50s. 50s career is, is is legendary not only did he drop like the hardest fucking music for a three-year period but now he's you know as much as he gets clowned on on social media he's also like um uh, he's also like a really really successful entrepreneur so unless b-rob transcends the sport unless b-rob becomes the michael jordan of, fo of football then i'm gonna have to go with 50 cent there 
eight hour clock never seen that before yeah dude uh eight hour clocks i feel like are becoming way more popular they do a ton of eight hour clocks on underdog it's actually what i like doing the most so i do fast drafts when i'm doing content with you guys to do streams obviously because you can't do a fucking slow draft but they have slow drafts also that are eight hours between picks and what i like to do is have like 15 bucks lined up and you join five different slow drafts so you're basically making a pick you know every half hour every hour or something your phone will go off you make a pick and you don't really have to worry about being super zoned in while it's your pick uh, so slow drafts are kind of fucking electric and i would i wouldn't knock them till you try them so try uh try some slow drafts on underdog and let me know what you think about them because they're they're kind of goaded Do QBs get the rush attempt bonus in the Scott Fishbowl too? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. That's a great question. And I feel like I've probably forgot about that as I was on the clock. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. This is the fucking analysis we need more of, right? Like, Everybody likes to talk numbers and analytics and all the specifics and shit when it comes to fantasy football. Like, you imagine that Mac Jones would go rogue at least once and just plunge for glory no matter the play call. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's that's probably the best analysis you can give on why he's going to hit that .5 rushing touchdown over, except for what I said about them having Tom Brady, the best rushing quarterback on the one-yard line of all time. Does anyone know where I could find I can go to find past underdog winner drafts? Yeah, so you go to uh I want to say completed maybe or no, wait, live. Live uh actually or oh, results, results. Okay. Yeah, results will have all your shit here. If you go to results on the top and then drafts, it'll have your 2022 season which you can go to and look at and then it'll have all the ones dating back. So it's got the whole history here and we're on the clock. Do we like any of the receivers more than we like the running backs right now? We like Trey. We like Isaiah, so we'll just put them in the queue so I don't tap out. Don't hate Terrace Marshall or Puka, and y'all know we love some Michael Wilson. Did someone take him already just to piss me off? Do we like any of the running backs more than these guys? Eh, not really. Oh, fuck, I tried to take Likely. Move up! Oh, you fucking sh motherfucker. Uh, did someone take Michael Wilson from me after I just yelled? Yeah, they did. See, I have never seen a 16th round Michael Wilson. That has to be someone in the chat, you son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Sub peoples. Yeah, I mean, fast drafts are where people make mistakes and capitalize. But, like, I also – I don't really play these drafts to win money, to be honest with you. I play the drafts for me to stay on top of trends and ADP movement and also just to make fun content with you guys and be able to interact with you while I do it. Like, I'm not on underdog to be like, I'm hoping to take home the fucking million-dollar prize with my optimizer, fucking statalizer, analyzer, projectomizer. That just – it ain't me. It ain't fucking me, you know? God, the, the fucking – cream of the crop left here really good but i don't have a single share of gus edwards i'm so out on him but like i don't know i guess if i'm wrong right like why not i guess get him in my portfolio is there a way to see adps without joining a draft yep uh so if you go to rankings right here if you go to rankings and then uh nfl so these these are not actually rankings these are adp so you'll see it here and there's adp on the right side How much stock should I put in the team projections they show at the end of the draft? That's a really good question, and I would literally put zero because most of that comes from the fact that any team that drafts three quarterbacks will have the highest projections. If you leave your draft with two quarterbacks, you will have uh, probably the lower half of projections. I think if you draft four, you're likely to be the lead projection guy. So a lot of it just has to do with how many QBs you have on your roster, unfortunately. So I, I would definitely wouldn't buy – much stock into that everyone in this that's a super fucking fair point i forgot that literally everybody in the draft is from discord 
So again, if you have not drafted with us and you want to, join the Discord. Free to join. Link down below. Download Underdog. Use code BDGE. Let's fucking go. Uh, it's a great point. Yeah, you could set your own rankings on that page, on the rankings page, so that if you time out or something, it'll take the guys that you have highest ranked. How do you feel about Zamir White, round 16 plus, with the possibility of Josh Jacobs holding out? Yeah, that's actually probably a super fucking sharp pick. I didn't really even think about it, and I was about to take him as my next pick, but then someone just took him after you said that. So uh, I think that's something to keep an eye on because – I think between Barkley and Jacobs, the most likely of the two to sit out, in my opinion, is Jacobs. So, yeah, I, I think that's probably a good point. Does Deuce Vaughn make the RB2 spot in Dallas backfield? I'm, I'm, I'm definitely out on Deuce Vaughn. They don't need, like, what they need out of the RB2 is a fucking thumper. They need a Zeke-type back. They need someone who is kind of built like Zeke. And Deuce Vaughn is literally like, it's like if Zeke shit out a football player, it'd be Deuce Vaughn. No offense, I guess. That's another good point. Drafting players who are not currently signed doesn't add any expected points. So if you draft Zeke, if you draft Kareem Hunt, if you draft Lenny, any free agent, uh, it does not count towards your point total. Great point. Oh, that was you picking who took Zamir away. I see, I see. Oh, baby, I love you. Right. We're almost back up on the clock for our last pick. I would like to just end this by thanking everybody that hung out with us uh, for the day. We do this stream every Saturday. I also do a draft strategy related video every Monday. We do regular just player analysis Tuesday and Friday. We also do a stream in the office every Thursday as well. So again, if you're getting ramped up to football and fantasy football, et cetera, et cetera, make sure you subscribe to thy channel. Hit the thumbs up button while you are down there if you're watching it afterwards. And uh, that's it, man. Go download the, the Underdog app. If you really want to support us, if you really want to support the brand, if you want to have some fucking fun, if you want to be prepped for your fantasy leagues, downloading the Underdog app and using our code BDGE when you deposit 10 bucks or more is the single best way to do it. And the single best way to end your drafts is by drafting some piece of shit like Chase Claypool. I'm sorry. He's probably like a decent guy. I might just grab another tight end. What do we like? Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry, I feel like, is like maybe a little bit slept on, huh? Hey, yeah, fuck it. I don't mind going three tight ends because you could also throw one of the tight ends into a flex play. Oh, I drafted four. Fuck. That's all right. Four tight ends builds are the new fucking cool. It's the new black. All right, uh, well, I'm out of here because that's my draft. Should we recap the team real quick? Yeah, here are the quarterbacks on the right, Hertz and Derek Carr. Running backs, Ramondre, Aaron Jones, Brian Robinson, Elijah Mitchell, Gus Edwards. Wide receivers, Cooper Cup, Michael Pittman, Jahan Dotson, Zay Flowers, Michael Thomas, Rashid Shahid, Tim Patrick. So we got, we got, oh, we got a super New Orleans stack. We got Kittle, Jawan Johnson, Trey McBride, and Hunter Henry. So not only do we have Michael Thomas and Rashid Jahi, we got Jawan on Derek Carr. We need a career year out of Derek Carr. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We're in for a terrible year. All right. I love you all. Subscribe to the channel. I'm out.